the audacity and just the 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 arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood. You don't. Okay, you don't own periods. You don't own womanhood. You experience both and both are different for every person. But as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you. So you can't gatekeep it. Yes, we do. And yes, we can. And we will. Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So, as those of you who pay attention to the culture war will have noticed, the current in vogue woke ideology that everybody has to defer to lest ye be trussed up on a stake by a mob wielding torches and pitchforks to be burned alive is radical gender theory. Also, this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Now, Radical gender theory was really big back in early 2020, mostly in the form of the trans women are women and trans men are men thing, plus the debate over whether trans women should be allowed into women's bathrooms and sports and spaces, etc. Pretty stock standard stuff. This was preceded by climate alarmism, which took up pretty much all of 2019 and some of 2018, which in turn was preceded for about half of 2018 and most of 2017 by third wave feminism. You know, all the yelling about male privilege and toxic masculinity and hashtag me too and patriarchy. That kind of feminism can only be posthumously described as female-centric feminism. There was no real cultural push at the time to include trans women, that is biological males who identify as women, as an intrinsic part of the feminist movement. They had their own thing, women had theirs. And look, I say posthumously very deliberately, because during that period between 2017 and 2020, that third wave female-centric feminism was brutally slaughtered and then cannibalized by the trans lobby. Now, to be clear, when I say the trans lobby, I don't mean trans people, not at all. Most trans people are really, really normal and not activist and want to live their lives in peace and quiet. And most pointedly, they don't insist that biology isn't real. Trans women who are not opportunistic activists really do respect women and womanhood and as a result would never ever claim to be the same as a biological woman. I am not at all talking about them. But before I tell you just who I am talking about, a quick word from this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Had it with being anxious every time you log into your online banking and PayPal accounts? Frustrated by the message, this content is geo-blocked in your region, popping up every time you want to read that article or watch that video? Well, you can cast those problems aside thanks to today's sponsor, Surfshark. A VPN or virtual privacy network like Surfshark keeps your online identity safe by encrypting the information sent between your device and the internet. This means your personal data is protected from data mining corporate conglomerates as well as hackers, and of course, from governments sticking their noses into your private business. Surfshark does this by changing the virtual location of your device with a different one by switching your IP address, which allows you to access content that may be geo-blocked in your region. Well, hello there, American Netflix. And thanks to Surfshark having over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries, the possibilities are endless for entertainment. But my favorite thing about Surfshark VPN is the privacy. As a social media commentator, I spend the majority of my professional life on the internet. Everything from my YouTube account to my crowdsourcing platforms, my livelihood is very much dependent on internet security. A VPN gives me confidence that my professional life is well and truly safeguarded from online threats, data leaks, and internet criminals. I honestly couldn't think of a better reason to get Surfshark than that. And another benefit of Surfshark is their clean web feature, which blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the web safely. And you can link an unlimited number of devices to one Surfshark account. Handy and cost effective. So why not give Surfshark VPN a try? If you click the link in the video description below, you can use the code word DAISY to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out.
So, the trans lobby is made up of left-wing extremists, some of whom are trans but not all. The rest, just from my observation, appear to be largely white gay men who are misogynist and white women of varying sexual orientations who are feminists but so desperately want to be liked by said white gay misogynistic men that they have allowed themselves to fall for possibly the greatest trick their precious patriarchy has ever managed to pull off. Which is, of course, to get mainstream cultural feminists to not only accept but insist that biological males who feel like women are in fact women, without qualifier or proof, and additionally, that said biological male should not only be part of, but effectively leading the feminist movement. It's an unconscious deification of male privilege by the women who, not that long ago, wouldn't shut up about how bad that very thing was. This is what happens when you allow your movement to go into hibernation for two years. Anyway, back to 2020. While it looked like the radical gender lobby was gaining traction in 2020, that was very quickly snuffed out by the death of George Floyd and the ensuing race ideology of Black Lives Matter, plus of course left-wing COVID hysteria from activists who seem to get titillated by governments browbeating them. Sort of like a weird BDSM relationship with the state. However, now BLM and woke COVID hysteria have largely run their course, radical gender theory has crashed its way back into the spotlight and is more radical than ever. Not only do we now have the relentless patriarchal push to allow males to enter female spaces, etc., we also have the advent of trans activist teachers pushing their political ideology onto their students, drag queen story hour, and worst of all, woke parents taking their children to sexually explicit drag shows to teach their children about tolerance and inclusivity. All of this I have covered in previous videos. But most recent and arguably the most ridiculous aspect of this radical, radical push is the insistence by what appears to be an increasing number of trans activist women that they can, in fact, get, and I cannot believe I am about to say this, periods. <coughs> now, I think this trend, which had actually been going on for a little while already, came to light with Dylan Mulvaney, a trans girl who was also an actor who went viral early last year with her incredibly problematic series, Days of Girlhood. Anyway, in one of these videos, Dylan made a point of letting everyone know that she carries tampons with her in her purse. Not so she can use them, but so she can give them to women if she's ever asked for one. Day 12 of being a girl and I just picked up some tampons and y'all are probably thinking, Dylan, where are you going to put those? They're not for me. But this last weekend, I was in the restroom and the girl in the stall next to me was like, hey, do you have a tampon? And I froze. I was like, sorry, no. But in that moment, I decided, you know what? I'm always going to have one on hand for anyone who needs it. You come over to my house and we're having a glass of wine. I got a tampon for you. If we're in the club together and then we go to the bathroom, I got a tampon for you. Women supporting women. Love ya. Not that women actually ask each other for tampons on the reg unless it's a relative or a really, really good friend. I mean, I've been menstruating for 20 years now and I can honestly say I have never ever in my life been in the situation that Dylan described in her video, not as the asker or the asky. Because women would rather make a temporary pad out of toilet paper before we would ask a stranger for a sanitary product that has been rolling around in her handbag since who knows when. Which, if Dylan actually knew anything about girlhood and wasn't just co-opting a fantasy about it for her own gratification, she would know. Not too long after that, we started seeing videos like this viral sensation from late 2022. Why? Stop. Why is this thing not hot? I swear to God, if anyone says welcome to womanhood, I'm gonna lose my shit. If that person knew anything about period pain, they would not be wandering around, rolling on the bed on their back, or talking loudly, because as women will attest, all of those things make period pain worse. If this person really knew anything about periods, they would instead be doing this. Don't try to perform womanhood if you haven't done the character study. Other iterations of what seems like an increasingly popular trend can be found, of course, on TikTok. Here's a little sample. It's a PSA to all my fellow trans girls out there on estrogen. Um, we do, in fact, get periods. We do. Trans women do experience a period, but that's not the point. The point is, 
cis women are so transphobic like you just displayed. Okay, but that's not the but same. But that's not the same. Okay, it's not the same. When estrogen reaches a certain level in the body, then you can still get the cramping, the bloating, the emotional sensitivity, and the emo emotional instability when that time of the month comes around. But you're probably just thinking of the menstrual flow, the shedding of the inner uterine lining that may require some sort of cleanup like a Dixie cup, a tampon, or a pad. But honestly, you're still comparing apples to oranges here. You don't know anything. However, it is a video that went gangbusters in the last couple of weeks that has really taken the cake for presenting this parodical idea of womanhood. And look, I can't really explain it. Let's just roll the clip. Okay, sweetie, so apparently you're not wanting to understand or listen. So, hi, I'm Mama Rose. I am a transgendered woman. I go by she, her, they, them pronouns. And I can tell you right now, my period I experience every month is very real, very valid, and very painful. But you know what? You go ahead and keep invalidating trans women. You go ahead and keep telling them that their experience is not real. You go ahead and keep telling them that. Because if that makes you feel like a real woman, if that makes you feel so big and important, sweetie, then you go do it. Whatever helps you sleep at night, boo-boo. But I'm here to tell you the real facts. Trans women experience menstrual cycles. Not all of us. Oh, no, not all of us. No, some of us are lucky and don't have to go through it. And then some of us, like myself, go through it every month. Every month. The cramps, the bloating, the fatigue, the nausea, all of it. The only thing I don't get is a menstrual cycle. I don't bleed. That's the only difference. And if that is what makes a period a period for you, I am so sorry for you. Stop invalidating the trans experience because my period is very real and so is every other trans person's period that goes through it, okay? And so is every cis woman who doesn't have a actual menstrual. Quit invalidating people because they're different than you. That makes you the wrong one, not us. Now, if you thought none of that made any sense, you would be correct. It doesn't make any sense, namely because this person is, you know, male and therefore does not have the anatomy to, you know, have a period. However, in a follow-up video, Mama Rose actually does a decent job of explaining exactly what she means. Let's watch. Well, sweetie, I, I was, I was never saying I had a uterus. Um, I do have periods. I have cramps, bloating, fatigue. I don't know how many times I have to say this to these people. Educate yourself. Google's free. No one said trans women have a uterus. And yes, trans women do have periods. Um, not all of us, but we do. Um, we do get all the symptoms. We just don't have the murder scene in our underwear. That's the difference. Um, because, you know, we don't have a uterus. Um, the contractions, the cramps are caused by the soft tissue muscles in our abdomens um, because um, all that's caused by hormones. Okay, the first thing I'll point out is that describing a woman's period as a murder scene in our underwear is, dare I say it, exactly what a misogynistic man would say about a woman's period. Just putting it out there. The second thing I'll point out is that Mama Rose has come to the conclusion that she has a period by redefining what a period is. Allow me to explain. Hormone replacement therapy, so the taking of estrogen that trans women do, can cause cramps, bloating, tender breast tissue, mood swings, etc. and it can happen monthly, which of course are some of the symptoms of periods. There are also some of the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, gluten intolerance, lactose intolerance, lack of fiber, eating too fast, eating too much, not eating enough, and too much soda. But hey, why miss yet another chance to draw attention to yourself, am I right? So, 
Mama Rose here, as well as a lot of the other trans women claiming to have periods whose commentary on this matter I have been listening to, believe that a period is separate from and different to menstruation. Menstruation being the shedding of the uterine wall via the vagina in the form of blood and tissue. According to these trans activists, a period is just all the other symptoms you get while menstruating, so cramps, bloating, headaches, nausea, etc., while menstruation is the bleeding bit, therefore apparently, magically, trans women can have periods. Well, Mama Rose, as you suggested, I did Google it, and I'm afraid you are categorically wrong. 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 That is wrong. And he did the wrong thing. Wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Proof. A period is the same thing as menstruation. While menstruation is the technical term, period is the colloquialism and comprises of not just the symptoms of menstruation like cramping, etc., but also the bleeding part. Observe the dictionary. When a woman has her period, she bleeds from her womb. This usually happens once a month. The bleeding from a woman's womb that happens once a month when she is not pregnant. The flow of blood each month from the body of a woman who is not pregnant. Now observe these medical websites. Menstruation, or period, is normal vaginal bleeding that occurs as a part of a woman's monthly cycle. Menstruation, aka having your period, is when blood and tissue from your uterus comes out of your vagina. Menstruation is bleeding from the vagina that happens about once a month as a normal part of the menstrual cycle. It is also known as having a period. Menstruation is the monthly shedding of the lining of your uterus. Menstruation is also known by the terms menses, menstrual period, menstrual cycle, or period. Even Wikipedia is on my side. Menstruation, also known as a period among other colloquial terms, is the regular discharge of blood and mucosal tissue from the inner lining of the uterus through the vagina. Boom! As such, what Mama Rose and her compatriots are experiencing has nothing to do with having a period and everything to do with the side effects of taking hormones as part of their medical transition, which happen to be similar to not just periods, but all of the other conditions I referenced earlier, from irritable bowel syndrome to having too much soda. Honestly, Mama Rose, educate yourself. Google, as you pointed out, is free. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this ridiculous mindset is absolutely not characteristic of all trans women. Far from it. In fact, while I was looking through the internet for content, I found a number of videos from trans women on this very subject condemning it to high heaven and calling out the trans activists who are perpetuating it. Like this absolute queen. You're all crazy. It is physically, medically, biologically impossible for a transgender woman like myself to have a period. Because we do not have uteruses, Therefore, we cannot shed a uterine lining. We do not have ovaries. How the f is that a menstrual? How, how is that a period? It's because it isn't. Trans women cannot get periods. Period. See, this is why I don't associate with the f community because you are all crazy. You are all crazy. But you come out with the dumbest f bullshit, man. I, I cannot believe that I felt the need to have to say this. But like, I feel like sometimes I'm one of the only competent people in my community because I swear to God, all you see on media, all you see on platforms like TikTok is just teenagers, teenagers getting offended over words like breastfeeding, breastfeeding. Leave cisgender people alone, man. We are our own people. We have our own struggles. Cough. You can't have a period! So please, please, please remember not all trans women. Now here's the thing. I understand totally that gender dysphoria is a horrendous thing to have to live with and that of course trans women would feel dysphoric at the fact they can't get periods. As such, it does not surprise me that some trans women would use those side effects from hormone therapy to validate their gender experience. And perhaps if the whole trans political movement wasn't so thoroughly vile a lot of the time, I would finish this video on a more sympathetic note. But given the aforementioned behaviour of the trans lobby and the ever-looming encroachment of misogynistic opportunists on women's rights to single-sex spaces, and now this co-opting and parodying of one of the most personal, uncomfortable, and sometimes situationally mortifying experiences that women can have, Sorry, 
I'm going to put you on blast. To any radically left-wing trans wokies who maybe hate watching this video, you all need to stay in your lane. You have no idea, none, how difficult and messy and often gross periods are. You have never had cramps that immobilize you for days, nearly every month since you were a young teenager, accompanied by the discomfort and mess of literally bleeding from a lower orifice for five days straight, 12 times a year, for about 40 or so years of your life. You've never had that kind of experience, you never will have that experience, and while I know you have your own experiences that are painful and uncomfortable and mortifying, stop trying to co-opt ours! They're not yours! Also, think of your own community. You are willfully peddling misinformation to young, impressionable trans women who are going to be mighty disappointed when, upon medically transitioning, they do not magically get a period. That, on top of all the other dysphoria, would be a devastating experience for those who are already mentally fragile. Do you really want to be responsible for that? Really? Women's experiences, our problems, our pain and embarrassment are not tools to complement a trans activist fantasy of what it is to be a woman. So just stop. I really hate to use the O word, but it is offensive, it's misogynistic, and more than anything else, it makes you look stupid. Period. Enjoy your day. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.